Good day traders, this is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. Welcome to today's session of London FX and CFD trading charts and setups. Got a potentially exciting day ahead of us. Good morning Chandra, Matthias. Before I uh, get started, let me get the usual sound video check. All good, all good. Hey Michael. All right, risk disclaimers. Give you guys a few seconds on each and then we'll get going. Hey, Marino, how's it going? Good, glad to hear it. Hopefully, it'll be a happy Friday for everybody. Morning, Max. All right, start out here with the dollar. Uh, not a lot of markings in this chart. We're still uh, we're still trending lower. Uh, it's pretty obvious that we're still stuck in that trend. Uh, as we, well, let me just back this up for a second. Again, we're down in this we're down in this support zone. It's a big support zone, very long term. Uh, so in the very short term. Even though we're in a support zone, that doesn't mean that we can't further uh, move down into that support zone. And when we take a look closer, put this back on the daily. When we get back here to the four hour, we go in a little bit closer. This price sequence here is not uh, is not very encouraging for for dollar longs at this point. Uh, we've got this trend line coming here off the June high All right and so we've got this we've got some nice inflection points along the way some nice turn points there there we're turning lower right now uh, again as I go through this uh, we're getting all we're getting all bunched up in here and if you look at this from a uh, from a continuation style head and shoulders and I know there's some out there that will crumble and say there is no such thing. Uh, there is, in my mind. Uh, you've got you've got this nice little sequence here where it, it's actually also taking on the shape of a of a descending wedge, right? And, and either in either event, uh, regardless how you look at it, and along with this trend line, uh, we're positioned for for lower prices. And today we've got. You know, looking at the technicals and looking at this this chart, uh, the path of least resistance is lower. And today we've obviously got uh, we've got the Jackson Hole speeches. Uh, we we'll start out in the morning at 1400. Well, in the afternoon GMT time, 1400. Uh, it'll be morning U.S. time uh, on the East Coast, at least. Uh, 1400 GMT we've got Yellen all right we've got Yellen and then later we've got Draghi a few hours later at 1900 uh, so that'll be coming up uh, in, in the afternoon evening time uh, depending where you're at It'll be the uh, early morning hours uh, Saturday all right so uh, We've got that coming up, and and just looking at this from a from a pure technical standpoint, going into an event, we're set up to to, to move lower, uh, and that's you know when you look at things from a technical lens, and then you take it into context with uh, upcoming catalyst. You, know, you take a look at what's the path of least resistance, and we're certainly getting bunched up into a a, a point here where uh, we could certainly surprise to the upside. Um, it, 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 that's always possible, uh, but looking at just the general uh, structure of this, it, it would it would be very unsurprising to see the dollar take some more uh, some more on the chin here. Uh, this this is a really nice we've got a really nice resistance line here, so uh, that's that's pretty key. Uh, in, in terms of, of keeping the dollar lower and and with that looking at the euro uh, which is a, a huge part of the DXY the euro is looking pretty decent 
All right, so this is the four hour. We've, uh, just like the XY, we're getting a, a triangular pattern developing here. And it's unsurprising to see these type of patterns when you're coming into uh, uh, things like this happen, all right, where you get triangles develop into key events. And it's basically a consolidation and squaring of positions by both sides of the market. Uh, there's some uncertainty here. And, and this pattern points to uh, something, we're going to get a break is what it's, it's saying. And that we're going to get a break that's probably going to be uh, fairly substantial. Uh, and, and while the options market right now is not necessarily pricing in a, a huge move, Implied volatility. There's nothing really in the short term that's that's all that irregular. Uh, but from a price standpoint, this is certainly getting pent up, and and we're we're due to make a break here. Uh, I'm inclined to believe again that 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 move would be a, a dollar negative move, and that we would get uh, another shot higher on the euro and if that's the case we do have some resistance here you can see here this it, we were looking at the triangle on the four hour but we can see also on the daily that we're still getting a nice uh, a nice consolidation a nice work off of this overbought uh, situation that we had into the 2010 low uh, if we do pop higher we're gonna have to face those 119s the feeling on this end is that we're still going to see one more uh, push higher in the euro uh, maybe maybe today puts a little bit of a wrinkle in in that, and, and we do get a pushback lower. Uh, but we are certainly coiling up here for a move uh, that that should that should develop uh, very very soon, and we do have the type of catalyst which can which can do that. So we could uh, we could be in for a nice a nice move here in, in the next uh, next few hours and into next week, and. Also at an interesting juncture, uh, with that in mind, is is cable. So cable came down to, and I didn't have this drawn in the other day, and and I and I should have, uh, but we've we've got. I had this drawn in the other day, right? This this level goes all the way back. This, these one twenty sevens goes all the way back to July of last year. And we can see that it was clearly uh, a, a turning point on several occasions. And right now we're, we're right down in that area, but we've also got this lower parallel. All right, so we've got a, a bit of confluence here. And yesterday, go a little bit closer. We had a nice little indecision bar, uh, a little push pull, uh, doji, if you will, uh, right at support, confluence of support. So. The, the risk is, as long as this holds, is, is skewed to the upside, which again would fall in line with uh, the idea that we're going to see some dollar strength. Uh, and, and so looking at the shorter term, though, uh, we, do, we do have on the four hour, we've got this trend line that is starting to break uh, right now in this four hour candle. Of course, this won't close for another three hours and 20 minutes but right now we're starting to see a break of this downtrend uh, as well we do have getting even closer okay looking at the hourly uh, yesterday we turned lower off of resistance and we've had a nice sequence of uh, a nice bearish sequence here but I think that with you know, on the hourly and this is where using your time frames is important that on the hourly we've had a nice sequence of bearishness and, and we do have resistance here but what what overrides that is the fact that we're at a, a much larger support level so I think that cable here <clears throat> is is looking uh, is, is looking to the upside and again you know we're, we're trying to, to poke our head above uh, this trend line that's that's coming down uh, off this high uh, so uh, if we get above that, and, and we could be above that just again on the four hour, uh, right there, that that's going to open up the uh, top side. Just initially looking, I'm thinking about resistance first coming in around 129, 129. We'll call it up to 129.15. Uh, 
before maybe it'll it'll struggle again. But right now we're we're positioned in some of these things to uh, to pop higher. Uh, dollar yen continues to look continues to look uh, in trouble. Uh, it is sitting at some pretty good support. It has had some bounce to it. Uh, we've seen a few bounces off this area down here, just under 109. Uh, but we get to the four hour again. We can see that we do have, you know, we've got a clear downtrend here. Uh, we have a possible descending wedge forming, but not real confident in the descending wedge uh, necessarily forming out, just because of the fact that we do have a uh, we do have a we have a big event today, so that can you, know, you kind of need a, a a quieter situation, uh, and and it could it could turn out to be a, a non-event. We may just see some really sharp gyrations in both directions, but then at the the net net result is nothing. So it's always possible, but generally dollar yen is not looking too hot. Uh, I wanted to look at Aussie because Aussie. Is another one again. Boy, that's very fat. There we go. Uh, Aussie's got this nice, nice trend line coming up here. Good, good inflection points. Yesterday had a nice little reversal off of it. Uh, we go to the four-hour. We can see here we had a nice, nice little reversal bar uh, off a pretty solid trend line. Right. This is, this is the, these connect very nicely, uh, and we had a nice little. Nice little reversal off there. We do have a top side trend line, uh, so we're coming to a convergence here again, kind of like the euro, uh, but giving the overall trend the benefit of the doubt, giving the the hold of that trend line, it shifts the the focus to the top side. So we're seeing we're seeing a lot of confluence here amongst the dollar pairs in terms of having support, having good looking charts. Uh, and 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 so that goes in line with you know what we're seeing with with uh, you know the DXY. So uh, I would say that you know if we look at Kiwi now. Kiwi Kiwi's one that and we'll go back to the daily is in a support zone as well. All right, this would be right around the neckline of of a uh, possible head and shoulders. But if we get some Pep in, in, in these currencies versus the dollar, then then I expect that that this will hold at least uh, for for the time being. So again, another another uh, another pair that's that's sitting right at support, uh, and that that to me is is something that is you know, we're seeing that nice confluence amongst most dollar currencies. Uh, looking at dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss, you know, we were looking at this as a possible inverse head and shoulders, but if we see some some real dollar weakness, that's gonna that whole idea is gonna fall off uh, pretty quickly. Uh, it, 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 negating that completely would be a drop below 95.82. I'm not really too focused on Dollar Swiss, more more on the euro. We got cable, and I do like that Aussie chart uh, with it sitting on uh, support there. Uh, take a look at dollar cad now dollar cad we looked at this the other day we were talking about this as being a correction and the correction obviously uh, ended uh, whether it was going to be another uh, down and then and then possible up uh, that's not looking like the case uh, we were looking at the four hour as well we've had a nice sequence here so far uh, develop uh, once that correction ended, we had the lower high, the lower low from over here drop. We formed some nice resistance, and then just the other day, on Wednesday, uh, we were unable to to get above there. So, looking at looking at dollar CAD, uh, the, the the trend is is clearly still in favor of of bears. Uh, I would like to see us drop down towards this 123.50 area uh, at some point. At some point, this could be a, an interesting long if we get another push down there because we've got this trend line uh, coming off the 2012 low. We can see here that we've got some nice clean uh, inflection points. Usually, you don't get them to be this clean uh, on a daily time frame when you're talking about this long term of a of a situation. 
a lot of times you have to get the weekly out to really see the clarity, but it's very very clean. Uh, so a, a drop down into there would be a a possible uh, scenario that could lead to a uh, a long at some point, but we're not there yet. We're we're still to me this is this is something where we still gotta. It's more more bear than bull. That's that's for sure right now. Uh, let's go and take a look at some of these cross rates. Uh, I want to take a look at let's see euro yen. So euro yen is still uh, is still putting in a, a somewhat bear sequence here. Uh, this was looking like a, a clean head and shoulders as we talked about the other day. Uh, this on the I think this was what Friday uh, we we had a we were having a nice break of what would have been the neckline of this head and shoulders, and by day's end we ended up closing back above again. As I was stressing, this is kind of uh, the epitome of of why you wait for closing bars. Uh, when it comes to breaches of, of necklines on these types of patterns, as opposed to if you'd sold intraday, then you know you ended you ended up with a with a loss. Uh, but where we're at right now is obviously we've got good support right around there. Uh, we are at a at a top side trend line, so we we do have uh, when you look at the four hour, it's still postured precariously, right? We still have. What we have, I'm going to get rid of this because we don't need this anymore. So what we do have is we have a broken trend line. We had that retest and then we had, we have this low and then we had a slight lower low and we're, we're, we're testing that trend line now. Uh, it, it could still, the, the trend line could still be considered up, upwards towards here uh, if we draw the highs in. So there's still some room there to, to confirm whether this is which which angle to work with. If this is going to turn lower, I'd like to see us actually have some kind of reversal event. Uh, it's still certainly a possibility uh, that we do get one right around here, but I'd like to see some type of uh, reversal event similar to the one we had over here. Uh, you know, some type of key reversal bar, maybe a large, uh, sharp uh, engulfing bar. Uh, something of that nature, uh, but right now, looking at this, it's it's not. It's still it's still looking more bearish than bullish. Uh, this could turn out to be a a bull flag, and and we could continue on higher, uh, in line with the trend that, that began back in April. So we're kind of at a, a at an interesting uh, juncture here, uh, in that you know is this is this going to be another lower high? Uh, or are we going to see a, uh, a bullish development uh, develop? So it's something that I'm more tracking than than trading, I guess, uh, is, is kind of how I'm looking at it right now. Uh, don't really have a great feel for what's going on with, with Sterling Yen. Uh, we're obviously getting a little bit of a bounce here. Uh, this is this downward wedge isn't really isn't really pleasing me all that much. Uh, at least it's not very pleasing to my eye. Uh, I, you know, I don't really know what to make of Sterling in here. I mean, it has been been oversold uh, to a fairly large degree, but Sterling in is kind of one I'm I'll wait on. Uh, we do have some levels here in in Aussie yen uh, to watch. We've got some resistance. Some pretty clean resistance up here at 87.50, and we've got some support down here, uh, you know, under 86. We've got some levels back here. Uh, we've got the high, a low, or nice reversal low. Yesterday we got a bounce. So this is another one I think we need to wait on uh, in terms of seeing what's going to happen. But we do have, you know, we do have some levels there that are that are developing uh, that could be of interest. Uh, let's see. Let's look at. There was another one of these. I think I wanted to look at. Was it CAD yen? So CAD yen. Uh, CAD yen is if we're if we're looking at one that that, that possibly uh, could have some strength uh, here. Is 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 we were getting, and I would have liked to have seen this fill out a little bit more before before breaking higher. Uh, but we do have. 
uh, a little bit of a bullish situation going on here uh, in, in CAD yen. Uh, it's it's not the not the you know it, this could be a correction of of this down move, uh, but I would say that that based on or, you know looking at looking at you know if you want to look at dollar CAD, you want to look at CAD in general. Uh, it is one of the stronger currencies, but that. It is it is showing a little bit more life than uh, some of these other ones. Uh, looking at Euro Aussie, Euro Aussie, I think this one's going to take a little time uh, to give us a, a, some a better a better picture. Uh, looking at the four hour, uh, we we are kind of converging here, right? So we are we are converging. Uh, we did have a, a pretty nice reversal bar. Yesterday, we had a nice four-hour reversal bar that came at trendline resistance, uh, which shifted the focus back to the downside. Uh, I could see us maybe getting down towards this trend line and then bouncing. Uh, it, it would be a welcomed event to see, you know, this form out a little bit more into a, a some type of triangle and then make a break one way or another. So that's something that I'll be keeping an eye on for for next week. Uh, and we'll see how things play out today. I mean, maybe maybe it has a big move, and and we don't. You know, this doesn't this doesn't last. Kind of like we were looking at dollar yen there with that descending wedge, and how that's uh, not really looking all that. Uh, you know, like that's going to end up forming out because of the fact that we do have a, a key event coming up. Looking at EuroCAD. All right, so EuroCAD coming up on a on a. Pretty decent trend line here. Uh, we don't quite touch over here, but we do have a lot of bottoms right back in here. So a, a little bit of a push lower, get down under 147. Uh, this could offer a, an, an interesting spot to look for uh, Euro CAD to, to bounce from. Now, Euro Sterling. Euro Sterling. All right, so Euro Sterling. And here, here's one of the problems, uh, and this happens. This happens in FX because because FX is on an exchange. It's not on an exchange, so there there are different, and I and I don't and because I, I have another platform up that I use, and uh, I'm actually showing on another platform. Depending on what you're looking at. The uh, this high over here, this spike high, the the one that happened in cable that caused Euro Sterling to to spike and drop. Uh, depending on on the provider, uh, it's actually on, in some instances it's above there already. Right, it was actually only like the spike high was in the 91s, uh, not all the way up here in the 92s. So it it, it can make things a little confusing, but so we were looking at this rising wedge, and we we broke above what was viewed as a retest of that spike high. Now we are abiding by this spike high right now as resistance. So I'm going to put validity on on this being a legitimate level because we're seeing it stall out around there. Now what I was talking about before with this a couple of scenarios. The first scenario when we originally talked about this was that we had a rising wedge and that if it broke the lower side trend line then that would be the trigger. right? That would be the trigger for this to drop and, and at least get back towards this May trend line. The alternate path was is that we would get a, a shot higher and then we would hit that that spike high from back in October and then we would reverse and then if we drop back through the bottom side of that pattern basically this would be a fake out and that would lead to a drop and it's still on the table uh, that's still a possibility uh, it, we're, we're, we're at resistance we do have this possible overthrow uh, and, and in the next few days we're going to learn a lot more about this but if we do get a, a, a drop back a nice reversal in Euro Sterling uh, and we do drop below this lower side trend line, then to me that's going to present a uh, an interesting uh, short opportunity. Uh, looking at the four hour, you know, we can see that this has been a, a very clean pattern. Again, that we've got that breakout right now. You know, we've got we're using the top side of this as support. 
all right but I'm looking at that longer term resistance level that's right around that area so we get down here and basically this was a, a fake out breakout uh, an overthrow and exhaustion if you will and if we get down here then I think that that we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see this squeezing price action uh, that w that's been going on since you know going back over our, about f what five six weeks now uh, we're gonna see this narrowing squeezing price action uh, having having turned out to be something that, that basically sucked in the longs uh, but the, this is still a scenario right now we're we're still sitting outside the pattern on the top side uh, but certainly break below that lower trend line and and uh, it, it, it'll have my attention um, I'll circle back around to Kiwi Yen Bangadi. Uh, I did skip over it. I, I wasn't wasn't going to go through them all, but I will I will get back to that one. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sterling Aussie still looks still looks kind of pathetic. <laughs> the bounces aren't very uh, they're not very inspiring. Uh, the bounces don't last more than a few hours, as we can see. By these, uh, these we can see by these little tails. We've had a couple of days now, and maybe even again today. Uh, this was one that we were looking at on the hourly. It's it's kind of done some shape shifting. Uh, it had a it had a descending wedge here, never really broke down. It had another one here. Uh, it had that that fake out into resistance on the daily. Uh, we do still have so we have pretty good bottom side support. Uh, and so you can see here we've got this this falling wedge and my thinking is is that that is probably going to lead to a, a push down here but this would be in a spot given the trend line running back here off October running under March that if we do see this result into a, a push lower this could be a, a spot to that we'll want to pay attention to and see if if buyers can't step up. Uh, it's it's been a very you know, it's been a pretty clean while it's had some sharp rallies. It's been a very clean downtrend uh, marked by lower lows, lower highs, and I'm thinking that maybe if we get down in here, uh, that might that might mark the end uh, for, before we get another another push back to the upside. So I, th I think it's we got a little bit more to go downside. Uh, very, very uninspiring price action here. Again, we're seeing those those intraday rallies uh, get sold, and 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 with that, uh, that's that's not a, a real encouraging uh, uh, situation. Um, let's take a look at Dollar Max. So Dollar Max, we're right now we're looking, we're talking about that that generally. Uh, bearish dollar uh, sequence and looking at dollar max we can see here the other day uh, almost got back up to this this resistance level which actually dates all the way back to April of, or sorry March of last year we had another peak in April then we had a, a pretty significant low in August uh, traded around it held it on a couple different occasions um, flirted with a breakout above but as we could see here as it tried to break above resistance we had some we had some tails and then another sharp break lower uh, which has now brought the shorter term uh, shorter term outlook to this juncture right so we're seeing the the lower tops uh, we've got a nice we've got a nice descending wedge pattern here going so I think that I think that that Dollar Max is is probably in position for uh, another move lower, and and again, uh, that's in line with with what we're seeing, just generally speaking, with uh, with the dollar. And so with that, we're going to start looking. We start breaking lower. We're going to start looking to the next support level coming here in July around 1745. So dollar max is is one that you know again dollar max looks in dollar max I mean you can't really you can't really put it in the same category as you're not going to put it in the same category as the euro and and sterling and Aussie because it's you know those are your major currencies and we're looking at a 
and an EM here, uh, but it, it does fit within that that whole theme that we're seeing. You know, a lot of these dollar pairs all put in uh, bearish price action uh, as we head into a, a a fairly significant event. So I think that that we're probably going to see some more of that uh, follow through here. Uh, looking at uh, Dollar Czar. Dollar Czar doesn't have the cleanest picture in the shorter term, but we're certainly getting bottled up here, aren't we? Uh, I'm going to take this away just to clean it up a little bit. We are certainly getting bottled up here. Uh, we've got generally we've got this downtrend since this big spike high back in in January of of last year. Uh, we're getting an, a, a nice wedge forming here in Dollar Czar, so I think Dollar Czar is is poising itself for a, a big move. Uh, you want to wait for it to break, of course, but dollar czar looks, you know, if going in line with this trend, uh, then the next move would likely be to the downside. And we will look at Kiwi Yen now. I'm sorry I skipped over that one. Um, Kiwi Yen, as we were talking about the other day, we've got this trend line with a lot of, a lot of play on it. So just Purely from a from a standpoint of having a good support level to watch, should Kiwi Yen drop, uh, is is looking down around these low 78s. This might be an area uh, where we get a drop down there uh, after an extended move lower that we could then see a rebound. So Kiwi Yen is one that you know again looking at all these inflection points, we've got a we've got a very nice trend line to work with. Uh, and and so a drop into that area, if we were to see some bullish price action start taking shape at that trend line, uh, would be of interest uh, for a, a rebound at that point. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look. Uh, you know what I was I was actually looking at was what was it was a dollar knock. So dollar knock. Dollar knock in line again, weak weak dollar uh, price action. We had this we have this really nice you know lots of inflection points touching uh, over here again, and we're starting to break through that. Now I don't I don't like this one uh, from a tactical standpoint so much because it, it, it's, we're already we're already down extended at a lower low and and whatnot. Uh, but it, it, it goes to show that we're, we're certainly, uh, the, the dollar is very vulnerable at this, at this moment to having another, uh, another push lower. Uh, we're seeing that across the board. And with that, let's take a look at gold now. All right, so gold, gold well above the 2011 trend line. There's no, uh, there, there's no debating anymore. You know, we've got a weekly, we've got a, you know, we on the weekly time frame we're well above it, well above it, well above it. So there's no debating that it's this, it's this double top that we're seeing gold struggle at, and we had a reversal, nasty reversal day, right? Tried to cross above three thirteen hundred, tried to make this breakout, had a nasty reversal day uh, on Friday. Uh, but we do have this this bullish channel forming, and given that we do have uh, some events, uh, event risk, uh, and and we could see an, an explosive move out of the dollar, then that could be a good thing for gold, right? So gold, looking at this channel a little closer on the four hour, we're sitting right around it. Uh, price action is coiling up. Uh, and it's coiling up at a at the same time that we're seeing you know the, the DXY coil up, the euro coil up. Uh, so we're we're ready to make a move here, and in line with that trend, uh, we could you know we could see you know, as as long as this trend line holds, we could see gold then take another shot higher. Uh, silver as well, uh, obviously they're very highly correlated. Uh, silver also triangulating up here. Uh, and, and again, the trend is is higher, uh, and so we're seeing, you know, nice strong rally, decline, rally, coil. Uh, so to me, this is the the risk is, is skewed to the top side, 
uh, again, just like gold, as long as it holds uh, this trend line coming up off the lows, then then the the overall general picture is 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 positive for precious metals uh, at this juncture. So it's it, it kind of runs in line again with that that whole uh, idea that that we're going to see the dollar take another hit. Uh, we're, we're, we're right there at that point and again getting back to the dollar we we're at that we're at that juncture right now where you know this is this is trend resistance setting up for a for a down move uh, and and of course in these situations and we are in a big long-term support zone uh, it could always be a surprise to the upside and I would think that if there was a surprise to the upside that 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 perhaps that could squeeze on a bit but I just think that generally you know looking at this uh, yes Bangadi we're it, we're definitely uh, we're definitely getting to a point with a lot of these where we could have some big moves uh, it, it, we're, we're, we're right at that point and we have a catalyst so that's you know taking that catalyst into consideration as well it, it, it certainly uh, could be setting us up for that. Um, let's take a look at oil. Oil is oil is kind of become an abomination. <laughs> uh, it's a little little tricky. Uh, don't really on, on any time frame. Am I you know I guess if I'm looking here at, at the the four hour, uh, it it doesn't look all that great. It looks like it wants to wants to break down, uh, but really you know there's not there's not a lot of I don't see a lot of there's not a lot of clean technical uh, aspects to this my thinking is still that just broadly speaking again getting to that rounding top uh, higher highs higher lows then putting that sequence in reverse forming this this nice rounded top uh, and then and then, uh, you know, eventually this will end up turning out to be another correction. We did test the underside of this uh, this trend line on the daily, uh, but really it needs to get back and stay below this 47 line uh, in order for it to have some more room to go. I do think that's going to happen. I just, from a tactical standpoint, it's it's not like the cleanest thing. Uh, let's take a look now. Some indices. All right. So right now the Nikkei is sitting under this resistance became support. It's sitting under there. We do have the 200 day. Uh, it's it's one of the weaker ones out there. Uh, so I you know I think that there's still going to be some pressure on the Nikkei, uh, but I don't have a lot of conviction on that one. Uh, looking at the DAX, the DAX is is coiling up, right? So we're seeing the the DAX coil up. Seeing the DAX coil up here, uh, putting in a, in a triangle uh, formation within the context of this broken head and shoulders, but really the the big line in the sand comes you know, around I would, I would call it 12290 up to 12340. Uh, as long as we stay below there, uh, the DAX outlook remains neutral to bearish, it, and even if we get a pop above there. Uh, at that point, obviously, it, it takes takes some of the, the the bearish tone out of it. It would need to pop above and stay above uh, to possibly turn this thing to the upside. But if we continue to to, to work around in this triangle, uh, we could have ourselves a, an explosive move coming, and and that could, you know, well, here's the thing: Draghi doesn't speak until later when the DAX is actually closed. Now Yellen does. Yellen will be speaking an hour and a, start speaking an hour and a half before the DAX closes. So, with that, if we see a really strong move out of the euro, which would be you know, dollar driven in that situation, uh, we see a really strong euro move, then the DAX is likely to react in the opposite direction, and and the magnitude of that could be could be significant. Uh, but Draghi doesn't speak until later. Right until after the DAX is, is officially the, the cash session is closed and it's 
you know, we're into the, the evening time in, uh, in, in Germany. Uh, and with that, any big Euro moves that we might see in the afternoon, evening, uh, may not be reflected in, in, the, in the cash index until, uh, until we open up again on uh, next week. So uh, let's move on to the FTSE. The FTSE, you know, I've, I've, I've kind of changed this a little bit uh, just based on the fact that we are really the, the, the big level. I've changed this trend line. Uh, it, I had it drawn in just a little bit differently before uh, the 2016 trend line going back to the February lows, All right? And then passing under these lows back in June, Brexit, and then over here. Uh, but 7,300 was the big uh, support area that we've been watching for a possible double top, and that would have been the neckline. Uh, the question was, well, if we hold here, are we just going to go into a range? Uh, and right now, that's looking to be the case. Uh, we really needed, in order for us to confirm that this was a double top, uh, and it could still be, we could still turn back lower here, but in order to confirm it to be a double top, we need to close below 7,300. Uh, a strong close below 7,300 to open up the downside. But right now, we're sitting in the middle of the range. Indices are a little tough uh, with that said. You know, again, looking at the charts that we just looked at, you can see that the, the clarity uh, is there's more clarity in FX and, and I've been talking about that recently the indices are uh, a little on the tough side uh, now and, and with that said uh, we've got the the S&P and the S&P is are we forming a, a, a bull flag here are we gonna break out to the upside uh, giving the trend the benefit of the doubt that would be a, certainly within the the characteristic of the bull market uh, but even if we do decline further down, it doesn't necessarily turn uh, the S&P uh, super bearish. We do have a lot of support at 2405. Very, 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 very important trend line uh, given the inflection points. The 2016 trend line is very important because not only was this a major low uh, after this, this corrective period, but it was also right before the U.S. election. So you get a major low over here, uh, and then you had a, an, an event type low. So this to me is really the, is a, is a pretty big intermediate term uh, line in the sand. And at some point we may even get, if this continues, we may even get some convergence with the 200 day. Uh, and so that would become even more important. Uh, but right now I think that, you know, it, again, the indices are, are certainly a, a tougher spot to be. Um, there's been some intraday activity that, that has been of interest, uh, but overall, uh, again, FX has, has, has had a better, even precious metals have had, uh, had the better looks. Uh, so again, to kind of recap, uh, going into today, we've got, you know, again, we've got Yellen in a few hours. Yellen will be Yellen, and then we've got Draghi, uh, and we're, we're seeing those things, you know, we're seeing uh, a lot of a lot of things kind of coil up here uh, or at support levels uh, with the dollar um, being a, more likely than not under pressure. It's not a prediction. Uh, it's just looking at the general technical landscape of these dollar pairs again. I think that, that the, the burden of proof is going to be certainly put on the, the bulls back uh, as we come into today and, and so uh, that could, of course, reverse, but but that's just you know just using the the, the general outlook. Uh, dollar looks like it wants to wants to get hit a little bit more. Uh, and I was somebody sent me something the other day. It was regarding uh, it was regarding the euro, real quick, and I I forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, is that the and I think it was it was done by consensus, which is a uh, they they measure market sentiment uh, and right now I think it's I think we're like at something like 70 we got to like 70 percent uh, based on the survey 70 percent bulls and looking at the long term oops looking at the long term that that 70 percent area was was seen over here 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 
and I think it even got to like 80% and then and then I think it dropped to 70% as we made this double top here so we're getting to a point here where uh, where we could be uh, where we could be at a, at a point that, that the euro is and then they also noted that the top once we got to that 70% threshold came within one to three weeks later uh, and I think that given that we are coming into some pretty big long-term levels, uh, I think that maybe another push higher, that would make sense there, you know, that we do get another push higher, we got a lot of bullishness, uh, and, and then, it, you know, you've got everybody bullish, we get one more push higher, uh, kind of the one more one last one last into those long-term levels and then maybe we get a, a reversal in the euro but right now I mean there's really not a lot to not a lot to, to be negative on when it comes to uh, the euro at this at this juncture all right that's it that's it so we've got uh, we, we've got we've got Jackson Hole today and we've got things coming to a coming to a head. So uh, that's it for today. Uh, and we will. I'll be back on Tuesday. Later, by the way, uh, David Song, I believe David's going to be David, is going to do a Jackson Hole preview. So you know, I I didn't talk about the the, the fundamental aspects uh, to this, uh, but I don't know if we can get down here. Well, I guess not. I guess we don't have that. I thought we had a. I thought we had one coming up. Uh, I thought we had a, something coming up on that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, again, 1400 GMT time. Uh, yell and start speaking. So everybody, just kind of buckle up. Make sure you're uh, using proper risk management and uh, best of luck. And I will talk to you guys on uh, Tuesday. We'll do uh, commodities and indices, and we'll see where we're at with this stuff, and uh, and see if maybe if if gold gold can't break above that 1300. And we'll talk about that on uh, Tuesday and see if if it can't do that. Alrighty, guys, you have a good weekend. Appreciate your time. Take care.